Currently, we have an AI that can act, it can walk around and patrol, but it can't yet decide anything. So to add the ability for the AI to make decisions and change its state based on the result of those decisions, we need to add our next object type, the decision. So let's add a new script called decision. Open it for editing. And so like action, the decision is gonna be an abstract base class with a single function called decide. So I'm gonna add the abstract keyword. It's also gonna inherit from scriptable object. I'm gonna delete start and update. And then we are going to have a public abstract function that returns a bool. And this is where it's different from act, act return void. Decide is gonna return true or false based on the result of the decision. So it's also gonna take a state controller. And so decide can give us a true or false answer about whatever it was asked to decide about. So we can save that script and we can return to Unity to create our first decision that's gonna inherit from this, from decision, which is gonna be our look decision. So we're gonna create a new C-sharp script, and this is gonna be called look decision. And so in look decision, we are going to inherit from decision. We're gonna add the create asset menu attribute. I'm gonna type a million times this session, and it's gonna be pluggable AI. This is gonna be decisions, not actions, look. So look is going to not need starter update, but it is going to override decide, right? So we're going to have a public override bool decide, and it's gonna take a state controller called controller. And in decide, we're gonna declare a new bool called target visible. In a moment, we're gonna set that to equal the result of our look function that we're gonna declare now. So look is gonna be private. It's gonna return a bool, and it is going to also take a state controller. And lest I forget to do it, let's call that now. So target visible is gonna equal the result of look, passing in controller, and then we're gonna return the value for target visible. Of course, you could make this code more compact, but I like the readability of it. Uh, and that's, the, that's why I'm writing it the way I am. I would rather have readable code over compact code personally. Okay, so in look, we're gonna check if an object is in front of this agent by doing a sphere cast. So a sphere cast is similar to a ray cast, but instead of creating a thin line from one point to another, it creates a, or it casts a sphere down a ray, which has a radius. So an easy way to think of it is a ray cast with thickness, right? And I like this for simulating vision because if it's literally just a ray, our target could move one inch to the side and suddenly become invisible, right? Which doesn't feel realistic. So having some thickness uh, to the sphere cast works nicely. And obviously you could, you know, have many different ways of checking vision, but I think I feel like this is a, a reasonably effective way to do it. So in our look function, because we're going to want to return some data about what we hit, we're going to declare a ray cast hit called hit. And we are then going to perform our sphere cast. So we're going to say if physics dot sphere cast, and then we need to pass in first an origin point. So we're going to say controller dot eyes dot position. We need to pass in a radius, which is gonna be controller dot enemy stats dot look sphere cast radius, the aptly named look sphere cast radius. And then a direction, this is gonna be controller dot eyes dot forward, the forward direction of that transform. We're gonna store information about what we hit using the out keyword and passing in the hit variable that we just created. 
Then we're going to pass in the range, which is going to be controller.enemystats.lookrange. And I'm going to need to continue on another line. This is all still part of the same conditional, just adding a, a line break. And then, oh, actually, let's put the parentheses to close this off and then add the line break. And hit dot collider dot compare tag player. So all of our tanks have the player tag added to them. There's a lot of ways you could check if you hit the right thing, right? We're going to use a tag check in this case. Uh, and all of the prefabs, both the player and the AI, have been tagged player. So we can check that. So if these conditions are met, we want to set a chase target variable on our state controller to tell our agent, you've seen a target, get ready to chase. So we're going to add that to our state controller. And this is going to be a hidden public transform called chase target. Copy that, save the state controller so I don't forget. And in look decision, we're going to say controller dot chase target equals hit dot transform. Now, we also want to return true, right? Because we successfully saw something and we have a chase target, but it's also possible that we didn't see anything. So we're going to add an else. And in that case, we're simply going to return false. Okay. The other thing that we want to do is let's do this up here. We're going to add our visualization. We're going to add in a debug dot draw array. This is going to be very similar syntax to our um, sphere cast. We're going to start from controller dot eyes dot position. And we're going to draw a line in controller dot eyes dot forward direction forward normalized because we need to multiply it by uh, controller dot enemy stats dot uh, look range. And we're going to pass in color dot green. So every time we look, we're going to draw a green line in front of us. So we're going to draw array to generally represent where the agent is looking. Okay. Now we can save the look decision script. And let me just close these so that I don't get mixed up and save that. And let's return to Unity. And now we can create an instance of our look decision. So create pluggable AI. Now we have a decisions folder, look, and we'll call this look decision. And let's actually add in the scriptable objects folder, a folder for decisions, just to keep everything tidy. Okay. So now we have our look decision, but we don't actually have the capability for the look decision to change the state of our system, right? So that's the next thing that we want to add is the capability for our look decision to cause our state controller to transition to a new state. Before I start writing that code, let me take a look at the chat and see how everybody's doing, and then we'll continue. Uh, Hydrosyn asks, if you're just looking for a single target, would it be more efficient to use a Raycast instead of a Sphere? Like I said, I am using the sphere cast because I didn't like the behavior with a ray cast where if you just move a tiny bit to the side, uh, the ray cast will miss. The sphere cast gives us a nice area in which the vision will return true. Um, and I haven't seen any issues with performance on this. So I would say before you try to prematurely optimize, uh, get the behavior that you want. And then if you realize that that's a bottleneck, you could replace it with something more efficient. Somebody's talking about using triggers. I really don't like using triggers and I don't think they're more efficient. I would use, if you wanted to not use a sphere cast, you could use physics.overlap sphere. I would recommend that over using a trigger. Gideon303 asks, is the sphere cast like a cylinder or a cone shape? It is a cylinder shape. It's a bunch of, it's a sphere traveling down a line. So I would say most like a cylinder. It's like a rounded cylinder. 